pow. And you see, she's got the dillo in her mouth. And there is absolutely nothing he can do about it. Welcome back guys to another episode of Ark Survival Evolved with me, Pommy Gamer. Hope you guys are having a good day. I'm not having a great day actually. I've got some sad news to tell you guys. Unfortunately, Houdini's dead. And it's really, really sad. I came on and I was looking around the water pen for him. And he wasn't there, and I I thought, well, he's probably living up to his name. He's done a bit of a disappearing act on us. Um, but no, when I checked the tribe log, as you can see down here, Houdini was killed by a manta. And I have no idea how this has happened, because we obviously have this water pen here, which is supposed to protect him precisely from this uh, situation from happening. And uh, I actually haven't seen any manta spawning inside the actual bay here itself, so I really can't explain it. It must have just been a freak accident where one spawned this side, and of course he was on passive, so, you know, he just kind of sat there and took it like a boss, but ultimately lost the fight, and he's now no more. So, it's a bit of a sad start to the episode. We're going to have to um, have a bit of a ceremony later to... Um, remember him um, but I decided to move um, Hopkins up here just in case the worst happens then we don't want Hopkins to fall victim to those nasty manta either but what I wanted to do today guys was actually to go out and tame one of the new dinos the Caprisuchus because we're gonna need a new aquatic dino and this one has the advantage of being pretty quick on land as well because it's gonna become super helpful for us to actually take on the upper south cave, the, the cave with all of the water sections to it. So I don't know whether the Caprasuchus is able to fit through the um, the narrow cave entrance. Hopefully they are. We definitely know that the Sarkos can't, if you remember us taking our Sarkos from Season 1 down there. Um, so hopefully they're small enough because they're about the size of a direwolf. So, um, and they're really strong. They actually are like the direwolf of the, uh, the waters. They're kind of like a glass cannon. So I've actually made up um, a ton of kibble. Well, I say a ton. I've made five tapiara kibble. Um, Harrier R. tapiara has just been randomly laying eggs, as some of the dinos do. There's a percentage chance uh, when they wake from stasis that they all lay an egg. And so she's laid five, which actually for how we have our server set up, which is with six times uh, taming rate modifiers, we only need five of these, so it's very fortuitous that um, she's laid five eggs since we've had her. So what I'm going to do, guys, is hop onto Horus and head over to the uh, swamp area, and then I'll bring you back once we've found a high-level Caprisuchus to tame. I'll see you guys in a bit. And we're back guys, and as you can see, just down there is a female, level 104, Caprisuchus. Now, I've been flying around for about two hours now, and she is the highest level I've seen, so I think we're going to go after her, because I get a bit nervous when I'm in the swamps. And now that we've got these guys here who do like to jump, um, it's making me a little bit cautious and I'd rather not spend any more time here than I have to. Now she has just moved below those mangroves down here somewhere. So I'm just kind of waiting for her to kind of come out in the open a bit more. See if we can get a better view of where she went. I think she went directly under that tree there. God it's so hard to see when you're down here. Now, being a, a crocodile, obviously they're very well camouflaged and very good at hiding. I think that might have been her just there. Yeah, there she is. We're going to try and do this as quick as possible. So we've picked her up. And that was the uh, the relatively hard part. Hopefully the taming goes a little bit easier. 
I think I'm going to take her over to the western coast base. Um, we have the makeshift taming pen there set up, if you remember, what used to be the kibble farm. Now, I hear these guys can jump, so I'm hoping a three wall high taming pen is going to be enough. So we're going to take her over there and uh, get the tame going. I'll see you guys over there. Okay guys, we're going to have to try and get this girl in the larger taming pen here. So, let's bring her in as close as we can. Make sure she's just over. I'm going to drop. And I think she's in. Let's just double check. She is. That's good. What we're going to do is we're going to stick Horus up here out of the way just in case the worst happens. get our trank gun out. Uh, it doesn't look like the door's open. Might be able to get some headshots on her from here actually. Not sure if that was a hit marker or not. That definitely was. Oh, she's not happy. There's another headshot. Wow, this girl is quick! Come on, stay still for me, love. There we go. That's a miss. Don't worry, I'm not going to turn you into a handbag. Want to become friends with you? Is she done? Right. Approach with caution. She is unconscious. I've never been more nervous to go into a taming pen. Okay, so it looks like the torpor isn't falling too quickly just yet, so we're going to throw the uh, tapiara egg kibble on it. And we'll see how long this is going to take. Hopefully not too long. But it looks like the uh, the torpor isn't falling at all quickly, so I I've definitely got more than enough uh, narcotics to deal with it. But I'm super excited to finally have one of these new dinos, and I think she's going to be really, really useful and I really hope she's able to fit into the Upper South Cave. It's probably something I'll check uh, this episode because Freddy and I are planning to do that in the next couple of episodes to come. So if it is a case if they fit and we can get them out, then uh, we may have to tame Freddy up one. If not, an alternative plan is to breed a male and a female. So I'm really happy that I got a female and a high level female at that. Breed uh, two of them and then just kind of raise their offspring in the cave and in that way we can we can use them for that cave right guys I'm gonna sit and babysit this girl and then I'll be right back when she's about to wake up see you guys in a bit and we're back guys and our female Caprasuchus is just about to wake up we're just waiting for her to take that last bite on the kibble and there we go. So I think we're going to call this girl Kappa. I mean, why wouldn't you? For those of you that spend a lot of time on Twitch, you know exactly what that means. Let's see if we can get a turn around and get a better look at her. Do you want to come this way, girl? Come on. A turning radius of a bus by the looks of it. Tell you what, you hold fire there, girl. And I'll go and grab. Oh, we're doing this, are we? We. <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to let me out. Okay. Let's try this. Low. Come this way. There we go. Take a better look at her. So, yeah, it's definitely a prehistoric uh, kind of ancestor to the crocodile. It's got these kind of like larger hind legs that lifts its, uh, its back off the ground. She just looks absolutely awesome, though. Look at those eyes. 
That's brilliant. I kind of feel like Steve Irwin sat here. Somewhat thematic today, given what's happened to poor Houdini. But there we go. So let's just take a quick look at the stats. So she tamed out at level 155, giving us a plus 51 levels. So she starts off with 960 health. This is what I meant by glass cannons. Uh, start off with really low hit points relative to what they can do in terms of melee damage. Very similar to the direwolves. Stamina is pretty decent, 1085. Doesn't have an oxygen stat because obviously she's an amphibian. Food, no one cares. Weight is 210. May need to pump that um, because I tend to carry a lot of gear, so that's going to be interesting. And melee damage starts at 296.1 and a movement speed of 120%. So I'm going to quickly try and get out of here if you would be so kind. No? Not going to let me? That's really mean. Can I crawl? Haha, serpentine. Alright, let's grab Horus and uh, get her out in the open here. Now, whilst I was waiting for her to tame up, I was gathering up some resources. I'm just a little bit short on uh, chitin at the moment. Because uh, the saddle you can actually just craft in your inventory, and it's actually relatively cheap. Um, so let's just get it out into the open here. No, oh, you like your taming pen, don't you? Come on. Out you come. Really? Are we are we actually going to be doing this? Come on, you're embarrassing me in front of the peeps. There we go. Right, let's bring her over into the light here. Just going to gamma up a little bit for you guys, because it has turned to night now. Now we do need some chitin. That's an 84. Um, let's just whistle uh, passive so she doesn't get involved, because I want to see what she's like fighting on her own. So we'll just quickly kill this turtle, so that we get its keratin. Come on, Horus. He's trying to out-turn me. Turn, turn, turn. And there we go. You know, hatch it out. Nine. Are you still short? Short eleven or nine. Alright, let's just quickly fly down the beach here whilst we're here. Because we do have a training dummy over here. It's something I've been meaning to make over at the new base, just haven't really had the time. Um, we could get some carrots off of this trike as well. Level twelve should be pretty easy to kill. Or not, if <laughs> Horus gets a bit overzealous and decides to eat him. There's never a darn turtle when you need one, is there? Where are the turtles at? And we're back, guys, and I finally found a turtle to kill. So we've got enough stuff to craft up her saddle. So if we come into our Ingrams here, you can see I've already learnt it. And it costs 165 hide, 120 fiber, and 65 chitin or keratin. So it's pretty cheap, really, but as you can imagine, it's probably quite difficult for a, uh, a low level with no armor to tame one of these things. So I guess that's the trade off. Let's craft this up, see how much points we get. Probably not a lot, I'm not expecting much. 884. Ah, 963 was actually a decent amount, it was over 100, so that's pretty good. Right, let's throw this on you and see what you look like. Ah, very, very cool. Okay, so let's take a look at her. So, this is her normal walking speed, pretty slow. And then she kind of goes into a gallop. Would have thought it would have been quicker than that, but I imagine it's probably quicker in water. Um, left click is just kind of a chomp. Ah, the right click is like a lunge strike kind of thing. That's really cool. And does C do anything? C's like a, a chomp as well. Hmm, be interesting to see what they do damage wise relative to each other. 
So let's try our left click attack on our target dummy. I haven't pumped any levels on her as of yet. So, looking at 855 with the left click attack. Let's wait for that to disappear. So now let's do our C attack. 34. That's kind of interesting. I wonder what that's for. That might be similar to the strike where you can grab them in your mouth, but just um, at close range. And then if we back up, what does the strike do? Whoa! That was the right click. 1,539. That's insanely powerful. Let's see what the DPS is on the left click attack. One thousand twenty six. That's pretty good. Alright, let's take her for a spin in the water and see what she's like. Get a feel for how well she moves. Okay, well she moves not as quick as I thought. I think the Sarko is definitely quicker in the water. But I really love the animation of her. That's so cool. Watching how she swims side to side. I really, really like that. Got to keep an eye on my own O2, obviously, because I'm not an amphibian and I don't have any scuba gear with me. So, um, let's try and attack some of these fish down here. Can we do a... Oh, we want to fight the, meg the Mega Piranhas. Okay, let's go. And she can do the right-click strike underwater, although it does take a lot of stamina. Oh, look at that! See you later, sucker! Pow! She's got one in... She's got the Mega Piranha in her mouth! That's brilliant, and I brought it to the surface as soon as I did it died. That's so cool! That is really, really cool. Let's see if we can find like a Dillo or something. Uh, something that we can get on land. This girl is a lot of fun to play with, I have to admit. How much stamina does she use with the right click? It's actually a fair amount. So, speed and stamina might be something, as well as health, that we're going to need to pump on this girl. Kapow! There we go. Alright, we're looking for... Something small, there's a dodo there. Done. What level is this turtle? 40. Be a bit tanky. Kapow! Okay, so she doesn't take the turtles in her mouth. Let's see how she holds up in a fight. Turtle is giving us some knockback. But she's not taking too much damage. I guess, you know, the saddle is protecting her. Look how quickly she's making that turtle bloody. Nice. That's super cool. A dillo or something. I wonder, does she actually harvest anything? That's a good question. So, doesn't appear to harvest any berries of any sort, obviously. No wood. love that jump. What about stone? No. So definitely not a harvester. That is so cool though. And it looks like, depending on how I have my camera angle, if I'm facing down, or maybe that was just, maybe I was just getting trapped on something, I thought it, I was gaining more air if I had my camera angle up. A megalodon over there. Ah, uh, there's a Dillo. Let's get some stamina back. Stamina recharges fairly quickly. I completely missed the uh, Dillo there. Let's do a sneak attack from behind. Kapow! And you see, she's got the Dillo in her mouth. And there is absolutely 
nothing he can do about it. <laughs> and of course, you can still attack with it in your mouth, just like an Argentavis can. That is so cool. This girl is going to be amazing. Can you imagine what an army of these would do? That'd be absolutely devastating. And we're back, guys, and I've just brought Kappa over to the Upper South Cave because I want to test if we can get this girl through the narrow entryway here. Now, there is some kind of invisible wall and most large dinos can't get through, including Sarkos. I believe Bills of both foods are able to do it, um, but they're not much fighters. This girl is definitely a fighter, although she does need more hit points. So let's just open up the cave entrance there. You can see we've already laid down stargates, just like we have at all of the other caves. And let's try and get this girl through here. Well, it certainly seems like you can get these in fairly easy. Let's just take it into the cave a little bit more, just to make sure there's no other entryway she can't get through. So far, so good. I mean, this is just the main entrance of the cave. I guess we'll have to test the other parts of the cave. Uh, you'll notice also we've got our um, little cave stop already set down, uh, down here, ready to go for when we take on the next cave. Now, the question is, can we get out? <laughs> I will not be happy if she gets stuck. We only just got her. <laughs> well, she seems to be able to handle the elevation change fine. walks out no problem. So yeah, it does appear that you can get the Capra Suckers into this cave. I guess we'll have to see in another episode if we're able to use them throughout the rest of the cave to get to the artifact and whether they make a viable mount to take in with us. Friends and family, it is with great sadness that we are all gathered here today to remember our fallen comrade, Houdini. He was a great ichthyosaur, a perfect tame, but most of all, he was my friend. I can still remember the first day that we met. Far out at sea, I spent hours trying to tame him. Eventually, he yielded and we became the best of friends. Since then, Houdini and I have been on so many adventures together. Most recently, tackling the deep sea loot crates. Together we gathered so many rare resources for the tribe and we faced so many threats and dangers. But Houdini was never scared and he always got me back home safely. I'm sorry that at this home you were struck down in your prime by a vicious foe. I vow to you my friend, you will be avenged. But now the sun is setting for the last time for you on the island. So we light this torch in your honour. May its flame never extinguish, as your memory will forever live on in our hearts. Goodbye, old friend. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more Ark Survival Evolved videos. Until the next time guys, keep calm and level up!